Let us pray. Grant a merciful God that our church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. As I was preparing for this lesson, I recalled one of my clinical pastoral education sessions, known as CPE, in which I was asked, who are you? It was among one of the most difficult questions for me to answer. I could tell my supervisors that I am a woman, a wife, a mother, a teacher, a seminarian, but I don't believe I ever answered who I am. Even today, I am not sure that I can truly answer that question. Think about Jesus' question to Peter. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And let's play a little bit with this question. I will reread the question, emphasizing each separate word with each reading. But who do you say that I am? But who do you say that I am? 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 The question posed to Peter is the same question posed to us today. Who do we say that Jesus is for us today? And like Peter, we will probably respond with the same assurance. But let us remember that with that same emphatic response, Peter later denied Jesus. When the maidservant asked Peter if he was a follower of Jesus, Peter responded, and let's repeat again, I do not know the man. 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 Jesus loved Peter enough to forgive his denial. Jesus loved Peter enough to give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus loved Peter enough to tell him, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And in spite of the constant fumbling and stumbling that characterized Peter, Peter loved Jesus. Not only enough to call him the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Peter loved Jesus enough to follow him to the very end. Today, we heard the words of the prophet Isaiah anticipate the mission of the Messiah through the promises God made to Israel. The prophet calls those who seek the Lord to remember their ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, and their heritage, that is, the rock from which you were hewn and the quarry from which you were dug. What would we answer today if someone asked us, St. Augustine's, who are you? Would we respond, we are the believers, the church that welcomes the stranger, feeds the hungry, clothes the naked, visits the sick and the imprisoned? Would we answer, we are the faithful, the church that feeds the people justice? Would we answer that we are the believers who truly obey our Lord's commandment and love one another? More importantly, would others say of us, St. Augustine's, they are the people, the church, that faithfully obey the Lord. And we know they are Christians by their love for one another and their neighbor. Who do we say that Jesus is today? Do we really know the man? We know in our mind that he is the Son of God. Who is he in our heart? Is he our father, our mother, our counselor, our friend, our great physician, our guide, our compassionate companion? Or is he our judge and jury, our jailer, our guard, our punisher? Who we say that Jesus is for us is the Jesus we share with others. He is the one we see in others, and he is the one others see in us. Is this Jesus we claim the one we follow 
to the end? Is this the Jesus we say we love? If so, we need to bear in mind that what Jesus seeks from those who love him is not an answer. It's not an answer that is spoken, so much as one that is lived. In spite of our fumbling and stumbling, Jesus loves us just like he loved Peter. We may not be the rock, but we are the church. We may not have the keys to the kingdom, but we will be forgiven to the degree that we forgive. Or don't we always say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? Though we may not truly know our Lord, may he keep us steadfast and faithful in our desire and in our intentions to know him and to follow him even to the end.